Hey guys, so um, today we are going to discuss about the session offloading, right? Um, this is the feature which is not available on all the platforms. It is only available on selected uh, hardware platforms, right? So we will discuss about the concept, what is session offloading and how it is uh, improving the overall performance of the Palo Alto firewalls, right? So it's like whenever, you know, whenever, any session is not sending packets to the CPU for layer seven processing, it is considered as offloaded. offloaded right so uh why there is a, a need you know uh, when sessions st uh, stop sending packets to the dp cpu for processing right and why we are saying that layer 7 processing is done now uh, you know do not send packet for deep inspection right so uh, there are certain scenarios so let's have a discussion on them and then we will uh, see packet by packet how it is done so you know let's say you're accessing any SSL website, right? Or you are making connection on port number 443, right? Now we all know that SSL websites are encrypted, okay? So when you're pack, when you're uh, traffic, so this is your laptop, you're connecting to this uh, Palo Alto firewall, and this is internet, right? So when your traffic is flowing like this, and you are accessing any uh, 443 website, right? You are having an encrypted session. Now this firewall cannot perform deep inspection on this particular session until or unless we are doing the decryption. So if you are doing the decryption on the firewall, then only we can perform the deep inspection Otherwise, if you are not doing any decryption, if you have not enabled the uh, decryption on the firewall, then you won't be able to see what is going on inside these packets, right? And similarly, the returning packets, you won't be able to see because it's all encrypted. And for you, uh, if you open up the SSL packets in the Wireshark, you will see that inside data, you will see it's all encrypted, right? So if it, if it is encrypted, firewall cannot inspect, firewall cannot do pattern matching, firewall cannot check the signatures, what is going on, nothing is visible to the firewall. And uh, your layer seven processing, right? It cannot be done on the firewall. So now you have two options, either keep trying to do the inspection on these packets, right? And waste your CPU cycles. right? Because we know SSL is encrypted and you're just wasting your CPU cycles, right? Due to which, if you have more, uh, and you know, these days, 85% of websites are running on port, 44, uh, port 443. So now you can imagine uh, if you have 5,000 LAN users, 10,000 LAN users, 15,000 LAN users, they all are generating, um, you know, SSL traffic and uh, you cannot do deep inspection, then why even you are wasting your CPU cycles, right? Because you are just increasing your CPU utilization, nothing else. Those cycles can be uh, used somewhere else, right? Because whenever CPU is doing processing, cycles are associated with it, okay? So CPU cycles, they are uh, precious and we should uh, save them to optimize the entire environment so that, you know, the uh, box can give you uh, high performance and, you know, uh, it can run optimally in, in, inside your network, right? So that is the reason uh, we do session offloading. So the sessions which are not sending packets to the CPU for layer seven processing, uh, we consider them to be offloaded. Only certain platforms, they support offloading, not all of them, 
right so uh, only certain uh, platforms which has dedicated fpga and we call them network processors right so in uh, small end platforms we have liger and in higher end platforms we have tiger right and uh, these chips later on in 3200 and 5200 have been uh, replaced by uh, other chips so we will discuss about them as well right so uh, in 3000 series 5000 series you will see uh, components like or fpgas like uh, liger and tiger ocelot jaguar right but in 3200 and in uh, uh, 5200 we have different chips okay so the fpgas have been uh, modified in those uh, particular boxes they are more advanced okay so now coming back to the discussion when we will consider the packet has been uh, i mean the session has been offloaded on the firewall right and uh, how it can impact the troubleshooting how it is increasing the performance right and what is the significance of uh, uh, session offloading so let's try to understand it with the help of the packet flow so this is the entire data path right here you can see this is data path let me just uh, draw it again okay so the components these components are the hardware components available in your uh, motherboard right they all are connected these physical interfaces are connected to a switch circuit or you can see uh, you can say it is a, a switch uh, chip with the help of the multiplexing right it is connected with this marvel chip right and then whatever data you receive on these uh, physical uh, interfaces it is being forwarded to this marvel chip and from there it goes to the uh, network processor then it goes to the oction then it goes to the jaguar right now we will see the packet processing and we will see when we will consider that our session has been offloaded okay so we will uh, see the entire packet flow here this is my client firewall and server let me make some space okay here we have server right so let's say client has initiated the uh, connection and uh, let's say you are trying to visit any website on port number 443 so you are sending your request this is your tcp sin okay now this sin has been received on which interface on interface number 1 by 1 or you can say ethernet 1 by 1 of the palo alto firewall this is your packet number 1 that is your tcp sin right now this packet has been forwarded to the marvel from marvel is it has been forwarded to the tiger tiger is nothing but your fpga field programmable gate array or you can say it is a network processor capable to do layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 processing and uh, you know it can do the uh, forwarding lookups uh, routing lookup uh, modifying the mac addresses you know source and destination mac addresses and it can apply the nat right initially this packet will be received by the tiger then tiger will forward it to the dp cpu now this dp cpu that is your oction chip will start the processing according to the life of a packet okay so i will make some space here and i will show you the processing of each packet here right so this dp cpu will start the processing of this packet number 1 your packet will enter into the ingress stage first which we have seen inside the uh, life of a packet then we will perform the flow lookup do we have any existing session for this if not then this will go inside the slow path we will perform the sanity checks and then we will create the session allocate the session id to it then it will go inside the fast path 
inside fast path since this is tcp sin it is not having a uh, layer 7 data so it will not go into uh, app id and ctd right it will directly go to egress stage because we don't have layer 7 uh, information this is your tcp sin packet right your session id has been allocated as let's say 101 so now this packet will be forwarded back to the tiger because now we need to send it to the server right so here from firewall this packet go to the server your tcp send so now this is the path we have done the processing now it has been sent back to the tiger then tiger will send it back to marvel and from marvel it will go to the egress interface which we have identified during the processing here in the dp cpu and then it will leave to the destination wherever it is going right over the internet this is your packet processing of sin then next packet you will receive synac from the server right so first let me draw these uh, packet here so that we need not to draw again and again so then you will get this synac and then this synac will be forwarded to the client then you will get the acknowledgement from the client you will forward it to the server by this time your tcp connection has been established okay so let's see so packet number one processing we have seen now our packet number two will come and it will come on interface one by eight only right so here comes the packet number two then it will be forwarded to the marvel chip from marvel it will go to tiger from tiger it will go to octeon and in octeon now let's have a look on this in processing right so first ingress stage processing then flow lookup at this point of time we know that session is there right and what is the session id 101 so right now this will directly go into fast path it will not go into the slow path then since again synag is not having any data so it will not go to the app id or ctd right it will go to egress stage right so what will happen now your processing has been done dp cpu will forward it back to tiger tiger will send it back to marvel and marvel will forward it to the egress interface so for this packet for returning traffic egress interface would be ethernet one by one and this packet will leave the firewall right now comes your third packet or you can say your uh, acknowledgement packet from client okay so packet number three will come on the same interface that is ethernet one by one from there it will be forwarded to the marvel chip right from marvel it will be forwarded to tiger from tiger it will be forwarded to dp cpu now how dp cpu is going to do the processing again same thing ingress stage Flow lookup. Since we have the uh, session ID associated with it, so it will directly go to the fast path. And then again, it is the acknowledgement packet not having any data. So it will go to the egress stage directly. Right? So your packet will leave the firewall packet number three it will go to the tiger then it will be forwarded to marvel and then it will be forwarded to the egress interface that that is one by eight and then it will go to the server till this point it is very uh, clean right session offloading has not taken place yet 
right? And uh, after this, we will see the UDP processing as well. This is the TCP connection processing, little bit different from UDP. So now, what will happen? Your client is going to send client hello, right? Because this is the SSL connection and we know it is secured. So before sending the HTTP get, first we need to uh, negotiate the uh, encryption parameters and we will establish the mutual authentication and then only we will start encrypting the packets and start uh, uh, sending the data right so first we need to have the uh, mutual authentication and uh, you know we need to have a common encryption uh, mechanism to encrypt the packets right so now your client is going to send the client hello now this inside this client hello you will have the uh, cypher suit right and it will also have the server name indication field this server name indication field uh, will contain the domain of the uh, url you are going to visit let's say you are going over the youtube.com right now this client hello will be received by the firewall okay so let's say this is your packet number four and it has come from the uh, you know let me just make some space so it has come from client so it will come on ethernet one by one right similarly uh, it will be forwarded to the marvel chip So let me just make some space. Okay. Okay, it's clean now. So uh, your packet number four, that is client hello will be uh, arrived on ethernet one by one. It will be forwarded to Marvel chip. From Marvel, it will go to Tiger, right? And Tiger will right away forward it to the DP CPU. Now DP CPU will start doing the processing of this packet, right? and how it is going to do the processing of client hello. Now this time client hello will be having the uh, layer seven data. So, you know, it will do the deep inspection. It will try to do the deep inspection basis on your security rule you have configured and basis on the security profile you have called on that particular security rule, right? It, on that particular basis, it will try to do the deep inspection. So first ingress stage processing, then flow lookup then fast path and inside fast path then we will try to identify the app id of this because now we have the uh, you know layer 7 information and inside app identification when you will do the processing, you will come to know that this is SSL application. Do not confuse, you know, do not get confused that, you know, Nathan, this is youtube.com. So it has been, it should be identified as YouTube base, right? The websites which are well known, we are able to identify them correctly based on SNI field only. But let's say the website is not well known right any random website if i talk about so if you don't know that particular website if the uh, signatures are not updated in the applipedia then how you will identify the app, uh, website as an application right so let's say it is going to cloudex only now cloudex doesn't exist inside uh, you know palo alto's applipedia database right so app id engine will identify this application as ssl so the uh, connection or the session if i will ask what is the application of this particular session it will be classified as ssl right now inside iap id we will check uh, whether decryption is there right if the if decryption is not uh, there then you know we will not call the proxy engine and all that then it will uh, directly uh, it will check whether you know deep uh, layer 7 processing is enabled on this particular session or not if yes, it will flag the session for uh, layer seven processing and your packet will come inside the CTD, content thread detection module, or this is your SP3 engine as well, right? 
inside ctd now uh, we will try to identify the content id you know we will try to identify the uh, user id and all that stuff right and uh, since this is app uh, ssl application you won't be able to do much here right and when you have tried to uh, identify the application so what you have done you have forwarded uh, this particular task to jaguar chip so jaguar is there to do the pattern matching so when uh, dp cpu was doing the processing according to the life of a packet when you have entered inside the app id right app id uh, so to identify the application you do the pattern matching basis on the signatures or basis on the uh, you know pattern so this sni field is having this domain information cloudx.org then this domain information has been shared with this jaguar chip to do the pattern match in the database of the applipedia to identify which particular uh, you know um, application it is right so later on your packet will be forwarded to jaguar jaguar would have done the processing it has shared the results with the dp cpu that this is the application and it is ssl right then dp cpu uh, again going inside the ctd module will try to uh, uh, you know identify the content id user id and all that stuff right and uh, after performing all the task since it is encrypted it will come into the egress stage egress stage right and then your packet will be forwarded to the destination server so now from here it will be forwarded to the tiger then from tiger it will be forwarded to the marvel and from marvel it will go to the egress interface that is your ethernet one by one wow sorry one by eight okay so it will be forwarded from here right so now server is going to respond back with the server hello server certificate right uh, hello done all these messages are going to come which will be again intercepted by the firewall and then after doing the processing it will be forwarded back to the client now after the successful ssl handshake now we are going to send the actual data application data you can say so what we do we do the wrapping right your http get request which is coming from the client it gets encapsulated right it gets encapsulated inside the ssl packets right that is the encryption we are doing so after ssl handshake whatever data client and server are going to share it will be encrypted right so your http get request will be encapsulated inside ssl okay so if you will uh, capture this particular data on the wireshark you will be able to see that this is uh, you know uh, application data you will be able to see like this application data and inside it you won't be able to see anything because this is encrypted right similarly you know uh, back and forth packets will be exchanged between the client and the server right uh, these uh, encrypted packets now just tell me one thing what firewall is doing for this session right nothing firewall cannot do deep inspection on these packets although you have created a security rule to allow this particular communication where you have called all the layer 7 profiles your antivirus your vulnerability protection your uh, anti spyware right you have enabled url filtering you have enabled all the layer 7 profiles on this particular security rule but you cannot perform the deep inspection because this is ssl you are not decrypting it right if you are not decrypting it then you are just simply wasting your cpu cycles right and here comes the session offloading so when such sessions are there in your network right 
and uh, you know where we know that uh, the deep inspection cannot be possible so what do we do so what after processing few packets what your dp cpu is going to do dp cpu is going to mark this particular session as layer 7 complete layer 7 processing complete right so when you're going to run that particular command show session info right and if you are going to provide the id 101 it will uh, show you that layer 7 processing it's done complete we cannot do much on this particular session right so uh, if this is the case then what is going to happen so this was your physical interface we had your marvel chip here then this was your network processor tiger dp cpu and jaguar for pattern matching right so everything was connected like this so now what your dp cpu will instruct to this network processor that i'm offloading this session to you now what offloading means that whatever packet or whatever packets for this particular session uh, you know is going to come now you do the processing do not send it to me right so what will happen now let's say we are receiving more packets from client as well as from server right so packets coming in and packets going out but the actual processing is being done by the tiger so packets will be forwarded to the marvel marvel will forward it to the tiger and tiger will forward them like this after applying the nad doing the forwarding lookup identifying the egress interface modifying the source mac destination mac and then they will be forwarded like this right so your packets are coming and the processing is being done by the tiger instead of dp cpu similarly whatever responses you are receiving from the server so they are also getting processed like this so they will be forwarded back to marvel and they will go to client so now what this network processor is doing this network processor is applying the nat if applicable right this is also doing forwarding lookup it is also modifying your source and destination mac addresses on the ethernet uh, frame right because uh, the mac address of this interface is different mac uh, address of this interface is different and there would be possibility that these interfaces might be connected to uh, layer 3 devices or directly to any other uh, hop right so we need to modify the nat uh, mac addresses as well so that the particular thing is getting uh, done by the uh, network processor everything right so now your packets are not getting forwarded to the dp cpu so this is where we know we call that this session has been offloaded from the cpu right and when the session has been offloaded from the cpu what we have done what we have achieved we have saved the cpu cycle which means your cpu cpu utilization has been brought down your performance has been increased because cpu is now available for other tasks right and uh, you know uh, you're running the device is running at optimal capacity within your network right you're not over utilizing the device so these dedicated chips fpgas whichever chassis is having them you know you will see that those chassis perform really well in the uh, environment right on the other hand, if you would have been doing the SSL decryption, then DPCP would have never offloaded that particular session on the Liger, on the Liger or Tiger, right? 
so when we are going to offload the session where we are sure that you know we cannot do any uh, deep inspection on this right and uh, nothing can be done and uh, the session itself have uh, stopped sending the packets for uh, deep inspection right that is your pan os right so we know that we cannot do anything and let's offload it so dpu cpu or dp cpu instructs the tiger to take care of that particular session and now how can you be sure that what are all the sessions right which are offloaded or not because this tiger is maintaining a table so whatever flow lookup table you have here where all the session ids are available and you can see the session details similarly this tiger is also maintaining a table for all these uh, sessions right so wherever it is mentioned that this particular session is offloaded so you will see cut through proxies mentioned in front of them so there is a command to dump the table right i have already shared that particular command in the cheat sheet so there is a command to dump the uh, table of the tiger or liger right where you can get the details about each and every uh, session so if you see few sessions marked with cut through proxy which means these particular session ids have been offloaded offloaded means they no longer exist inside dp cpu flow lookup table so if you are doing the troubleshooting on any particular session and later on you see that session id is getting wiped off from the flow lookup table please check whether this platform supports offloading or not right and whether your uh, session is eligible for the offloading right because if that is the case your id your session id will be moved from here right and it is taken care by the tiger right so you won't be able to run the packet diagnostics because session no longer exist on the dp cpu so you will see inaccurate results only few packets captured and then everything stopped because that session has been offloaded to tiger so you can dump the table and you will be able to see whether uh, cut through proxies uh, you know i uh, mentioned in front of the session it means this has been offloaded now to temporarily you know you can disable the uh, offloading for troubleshooting right so the command is it is very simple set session offload no this will disable the session offloading for you know or you can say temporary if you want to disable it permanently then set device config setting session offload no right so if you run this particular command then your session will be uh, session offloading will be disabled permanently on your hardware what are all the platforms where session offloading is supported and where it is not supported so platforms with session offloading feature we have pa2000 350 3050 3060 4000 50 uh, 50 50 50 60 right so x0 any any version of 5000 supports uh, offloading then we have 5200 series so same any version of 5200 and similarly your uh, pa uh, you know uh, 7000 series okay and 3200 also supports now platforms where session offloading is not supported so these are the supported ones and these are the not supported ones so pa200 220 500 
एट हंड्रेड एनी सीरीज थ्री थर्टी ट्वेंटी एंड वी एम सीरीज एंड देर इज अ कॉस्मेटिक बर्ग इन वी एम सीरीज वेन यू डम्प दी सेशन इन्फो you know uh, session table information there you see that it shows uh, session offloading is supported right that is the cosmetic bug right uh, in vm series we doesn't support uh, session offloading make sense okay um so now what will be the uh, applications which will be offloaded and what would be the conditions where a session will be offloaded conditions for session offloading so the first one is if there is no need to perform application processing right application processing means layer 7 processing so how we are taking this decision then uh, you know why there is no need to uh, perform application processing if your session is encrypted if this is your encrypted traffic then we know that we cannot do much or certain udp streams right just like your voice data etc right this traffic will can be offloaded your traffic which will never offload so certain traffic will not be offloaded that is web browsing if your application has been identified by pan os as web browsing then there is no way we are going to offload that particular application or ping application these are the two applications which never get offloaded right so if you are doing the decryption if i will uh, give an example here so here your application has been identified as as ssl because you were not doing the decryption and we were no, uh, we didn't went to any particular uh, website which is well known to palo alto right if you would have gone to the facebook youtube google then your application uh, might have been identified as youtube based facebook based google based basis on the domain name present in the client hello right but when you go to any website uh, whose details are not available inside the applipedia right so those websites either they they will be identified as ssl their application type will be ssl or they will be considered as web browsing so when they are identified as ssl and when they are identified as web browsing so if your packet is flowing on port number 443 and no decryption is happening then your application will be identified as ssl if your traffic is flowing on 443 only 443 and port 80 but you have decryption in place you are decrypting the traffic right then you have the ability to look inside the packet what is flowing right and if you see that it is going over the uh, website right and that website is not well known to the palo alto database then your application will be considered as web browsing right so if your application has been identified as web browsing that particular session will never be offloaded to the network processor okay so offloaded session will always show you your layer 7 processing as completed right because we cannot do much on these particular sessions and uh, offloaded sessions will no longer visible by data plane packet diag right flow basic or packet captures 
because now your data plane CPU is not doing the processing. It has done the processing for few packets and after it, it has offloaded the session to the FPGA or you can say this network processor. So that is the reason no longer you will be able to see the packets. So if you are able to apply the captures here or packet diagnostics here, after a few uh, minutes or after a few seconds, you will see that your session has been offloaded and uh, nothing is available here, right? So you're not getting, uh, although the user is initiating the traffic, right? That connection is up, packets are coming in, but you, you, will, uh, you won't be able to see the details over the firewall, right? So that is another caveat associated with session offloading. So that is the reason when we do the troubleshooting, we disable the session offloading temporarily so that we can see the packets on the DP CPU because we want DP CPU to process the entire connection. And uh, uh, after troubleshooting, you can enable the session offloading again. Okay. Now the another caveat associated with this session offloading is the aging process, right? How we will make sure that if any session is ideal that has been offloaded to Tiger, it is getting, you know, So it is a uh, aging process is taking care of that particular session, right? And aging process will kill that uh, particular session to free up the uh, session ID, right? How, how we will make sure that, right? So this is your Marvel chip. Then we have Tiger, DP CPU, and Jaguar. Okay. So now what will happen for aging process? So if you have seen that particular video session, life of a session, you must be aware with the aging uh, process. So this demon, this aging demon, it runs inside DP CPU environment and it keeps track of the lifetime of a session, right? If a session is ideal for long duration, then this aging uh, process or aging demon waits still default timeout. And after that, it kills the session and free up the uh, session ID and return it back to the pool, right? Since this is the TCP connection, so default timeout setting will be 3600 3, seconds. That is one hour, right? And if accelerated aging is supported, then it can free up the uh, session ID very soon. Okay. So now we need to see, let's say you have offloaded the session to the tiger. Now this session ID 101 belongs to tiger. DP CPU is not doing the processing and this aging demon is running inside the DP CPU. Okay. So after some time, now this session has stopped receiving the packets either from the client or from the server. They are not communicating. They are not sending any particular packet to this particular session ID, right? So now how your tiger is updating this aging daemon so that it can free up the uh, session ID, which has been allocated to this particular connection, right? So what happens in platforms 3000 and 5000, Tiger or your network processor is going to send, you know, is going to, uh, what they are going to do, they're going to send an update to the data plane uh, CPU and we call it session refresh message, right? So these FPGA sends a session refresh message to data plane regularly for the session stats and timestamps to be updated. So these FPGAs, they are, what they are doing, they're sending the session refresh message. to this DP CPU regularly for session stats and timestamps to be updated on the aging process, right? So on platforms, 3000, uh, 3050, 3060, 5000, any, any model, 
these stats are shared after processing 16 packets right so if tiger has processed 16 packets for this particular connection id or you can say session id then it is going to share the stats with the dp cpu right so be it client to server packets or server to client packets if 16 packets have been processed by this particular fpga then it is going to share the stats with the dp cpu similarly on another platforms like uh, 7000 or 5200 3200 right so we are going to uh, send these uh, particular you know stats to the data plane software when two conditions are going to match condition number 1 that one flow has accumulated 64 packets. So previously we were sending stats after doing the processing of 16 packets, but here it is 64. Second, a scan timer has expired for this particular flow. So if these two conditions are going to match, then only, right? I mean, uh, not uh, or these two conditions, any of them. So if any of these conditions, right? So any of these two conditions are, is going to happen, then we are going to share the stats with the DP CPU, right? This is only in the case of 7,000, 5,200 and 3,200 series boxes. I hope this is clear, right? Now, when we talk about uh, UDP stream, right? We have seen the TCP and we have seen the significance, right? And if your session is ideal, then how uh, aging process will uh, free up the session ID and will remove it to the, uh, you know, will uh, send it back to the free pool right how the tiger or fpga is sending the stats okay now we will see how your udp stream is getting processed right in this model so in tcp we always do three way handshake but in udp we know that first packet is carrying your layer 7 data And then we have Jaguar, right? So this is your UDP stream. Right? And UDP stream, the packet number one itself, right? The packet number one itself is containing the data, layer seven data, right? So now your packet will be reaching to the ethernet one by one right then it will forward it to the marvel chip marvel will forward it to the tiger tiger will forward it to the dp cpu now dp cpu will start the processing according to the life of a packet ingress stage then flow lookup slow path or oh, it will not go into the uh yeah uh, ingress flow lookup since we don't have any session id allocated yet it will go to the slow path we will allocate the session ID, then it will go to the fast path, right? And then it will go to the app ID. To identify the application of this session, it will also go to the CTD for deep inspection, and then it will go to the egress. Make sense, right? So, uh, and if pattern matching is required, it will be forwarded to the Jaguar, then it will come back to the DP CPU, then DP CPU will send it, send it back to the Tiger, malware, egress interface, and it will go to the server. So in case of UDP, you will see your session will be offloaded very uh, quickly as compared to TCP. Why? Because there is no handshake taking place here, right? 
your data is right away from the first packet your data has been arrived on the dp cpu we have done the processing and i told you before as well that few udp streams are eligible for offloading right so if it is the voice traffic what sort of inspection you are going to do on that right nothing any zoom meeting application traffic is going on what inspection you will do on it right you can offload it so the few uh, certain udp streams they get offloaded right and uh, then what will happen the subsequent packets so whatever subsequent packets are coming and going right their processing will be done only by this particular tiger in network processing chip right and what this tiger or network processing is capable to do it is capable capable to do layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 processing it is capable to apply nat it is capable to uh do forwarding lookup right it is capable to modify source destination mac right so all the uh, you can basically say it is the network engine which which can perform all the activities required to make the packet routable over the network right so by doing this we save the cpu cycles which helps to improve the overall performance of the box and uh, it gives uh, you know uh, it runs at optimal capacity you will see that your resources memory cpu utilization of these boxes will always remain at uh, optimal uh, level right they never uh, shoot up until or unless there are certain conditions right so if i do quick comparison between a box with Which cannot support session offloading, and with a box with the session offloading feature, you will see that these boxes they perform really well. So that's it. Uh, this is what we have inside session offloading, right? So session offloading never happens at the very first packet, right? So first we monitor the packets. We uh, wait for few packets to get processed by the DP CPU, and once we have taken the decision that no uh, further, you know. processing layer 7 processing is required on this particular session then we can good to offload that particular session and uh, if you want to check that if you when you are doing the troubleshooting if you are not able to see the session id inside the dp cpu flow table you know when you type so session all then you can dump the uh, table of the tiger or liger and there you will see all the session details and whatever sessions are having uh, cut through proxy mentioned in front of them it means those are the sessions which are offloaded to the tiger or liger chip right it means dp cpu is not doing processing for those session ids so for troubleshooting purpose you can temporarily uh, disable the uh, you know uh, session offloading and once you have done the troubleshooting then you can turn it back i will share one uh, article for this as well right one kb article and uh, you can just uh, go through it right uh, because it covers uh, one particular issue right uh, with 7000 and 50000 5200 platforms so you can go through it and you can uh, post your query if you have any